In this problem, we're asked to explain why the boiling point of ethanol is much higher than the boiling point of methyl ether, even though ethanol and methyl ether are constitutional isomers and thus have the same molecular weight. So the structures are given below, and just to clarify, this molecule on the left is ethanol, it's an alcohol, and the molecule on the right is dimethyl ether, and it's an ether, of course. And so these two molecules have the same molecular weight, but very, very different boiling points. You can see that the 78.5 degrees Celsius boiling point for ethanol is much higher than the boiling point of methyl ether, which is negative 24.9 degrees Celsius. In fact, dimethyl ether is a gas at room temperature, while ethanol is, of course, a liquid. So how do we get started with problems like this? Well, what we really need to do boils down to a two-step process. First of all, we need to identify the intermolecular forces that we find within each molecule, within each compound, would be a better way to put it. By identifying these intermolecular forces, we can start to judge which of the two molecules will have the stronger forces. That's what comes in in the second step. We need to judge the relative strengths of the intermolecular forces. Keep in mind that stronger intermolecular forces are going to keep the molecules of a substance in closer proximity to one another and make it more difficult to, for example, vaporize molecules from the liquid phase. So stronger intermolecular forces then lead to a higher boiling point. So this is the basic argument we're going to make for why ethanol has a higher boiling point than dimethyl ether. The conclusion we should come to is that the intermolecular forces in ethanol are stronger than the intermolecular forces in dimethyl ether. But this isn't quite a satisfying explanation. We want to point structurally to the exact forces that cause ethanol to have a higher boiling point than dimethyl ether. So what are the exact forces in play? Well, we can start with the weakest and work our way up, and that's, I think, a good place to start. And let's just simply list the intermolecular forces that we would expect in both of these compounds. Of course, both compounds are going to experience London dispersion forces, since all organic compounds experience London forces. Indeed, all molecules, to some degree, experience London forces. They have similar molecular weights, so we should expect the strength of the London dispersion forces to be about the same, and furthermore, their shapes are roughly the same. There's nothing substantially different about the molecular shapes in these two molecules, so London forces should be about the same. Both molecules possess an overall dipole moment, so we should also expect dipole-dipole forces in both molecules. And although we shouldn't expect the two dipoles to be equal to one another, they're roughly of the same magnitude, so dipole-dipole forces alone, it doesn't seem like, would explain the difference in boiling points. The key difference between these two molecules is that ethanol contains a hydroxyl group, whereas dimethyl ether contains only carbon-oxygen bonds. And the hydroxyl group, just like the NH and the FH group, can engage in hydrogen bonding. That's the key difference between ethanol and dimethyl ether. Ethanol can engage in hydrogen bonding, while dimethyl ether cannot. And just to really drive this point home, let's draw a picture of what the hydrogen bonding looks like. So in general, hydrogen bonding involves a strongly electronegative heteroatom, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, bonded to a hydrogen, which is interacting with a lone pair on another heteroatom, whether it be from another molecule of the same type or a different molecule completely, in what kind of amounts to a supercharged dipole-dipole interaction. The negative end is here, the positive end near the hydrogen, and there's a directionality to hydrogen bonds as well. The lone pair lines up with the XH antibond, leading to this collinearity between XH and X. So in ethanol in particular, then, we can see that it fits this structural pattern, and we should expect that the OH group of one ethanol and the H end of that OH group can interact with the oxygen of another ethanol molecule in a hydrogen bonding interaction that looks something like this. And it's this strong interaction that leads to the much higher boiling point of ethanol relative to dimethyl ether. 
The same sort of process applies to problems that are more complex where we're ranking, for example, the boiling point of a series of compounds. The idea, again, is to first identify the intermolecular forces that we would expect for each compound and then judge the relative strengths of those forces to determine the ranking. So let's go through and do that for this problem here. In a problem like this where condensed structural formulas are given, it's always helpful to draw out more complete structures to show you what's connected to what. So butane is just a linear chain of four carbon atoms that looks like this. It contains only carbon and hydrogen within it, and it's an example of an alkane. One butanol similarly has four carbons, but has a hydroxyl group on one of the end carbons and looks like this. Butanoic acid has a carboxylic acid functional group at the last carbon in the chain. And butanone has a carbonyl functionality in it at this position. So let's step through and identify the intermolecular forces within each of these compounds. We should again expect London forces in all of these, but in butane in particular, London dispersion forces are the only intermolecular forces that we find. And so we can essentially ignore the influence of London forces for the other three, but note for butane that because this is the only force that we would expect for butane, we need, do need to make note of it. For the remainder of these, what we want to do is focus on the strongest intermolecular force that that compound engages in. So if we look at one butanol, for example, Yes, the molecule has a dipole. Yes, it experiences London dispersion forces. But it's really the hydroxyl group that is engaged in most of the strongest intermolecular forces in one butanol. And of course, the key there, as we just saw, for ethanol is hydrogen bonding. That's the dominant intermolecular force in one butanol. Butanoic acid as well has a hydroxyl group and can also engage in hydrogen bonding. Although butanone contains a carbonyl group, contains a heteroatom, note that it cannot engage in hydrogen bonding because it doesn't have an oxygen connected to a hydrogen or an NH group or an FH group. So there's no H bonding in butanone. However, it does have an overall dipole moment, right, pointing in this direction or so. And so it can engage in dipole-dipole forces and this is the strongest intermolecular force that we should expect for butanone. Now this leaves us with a bit of a conundrum, right? Because we've seen that hydrogen bonding is the dominant intermolecular force in both 1-butanol and butanoic acid. And the complexity of organic structures means that we need to sort of take this process to the next level and ask how many hydrogen bonds can each molecule of 1-butanol and butanoic acid engage in? Where we're going with this is molecules that can form more hydrogen bonds tend to have higher boiling points. What we can see in one butanol is that it's got the hydroxyl group and so it can serve as a hydrogen bond donor only once because of its OH group and it can form hydrogen bonds through its lone pairs as well. Butanoic acid, however, has this interesting characteristic that it's got a lone pair that's nicely situated to engage in hydrogen bonding in the same direction as its OH group would engage in hydrogen bonding. So to blow this up a little bit, we can see that two molecules of butanone can form sort of a dimeric structure as they hydrogen bond with one another like this. And I'll just abbreviate that as an R group. This dimeric structure means that these are very tight hydrogen bonds between two molecules of butanoic acid, whereas two molecules of butanol can really only form one hydrogen bond between them. The dimeric nature of hydrogen bonds in butanoic acid means that this is actually the compound with the highest boiling point. Butanol comes in a close second because it can again engage in hydrogen bonding. Butanone comes in at number three because of its dipole-dipole forces, and butane has the lowest boiling point of them all because it's only subject to London dispersion forces.